Hi everyone, I thought I would try and do the Reading Rush vlog challenge for the Reading Rush in 2020, which is a huge readathon that goes over a whole week from the 20th to the 26th of July. So that's what I'm gonna do. And essentially you just try and read as much as you can and complete challenges along the way. It is midday of Monday, the first day of the Reading Rush, and I am feeling like I want to try and do this. I thought I would just quickly pop in here to go through what my TBR will be for this readathon. Seven challenges, so ideally you would read seven books. Anyway, I'll take you through the challenges now and I'll tell you what I'm planning on reading this week. So, firstly, read a book that matches the colour of your birthstone. I was born in November, so my birthstone, I have two. I have topaz, I think, which is blue, or citrine, which is yellow. So I'm going to go with citrine and I would like to read Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. I mentioned this in my last few videos about books. So if you follow me at all, you would know that I already own this book and it's happening. This book is the longest book on my TBR for sure. It's over 400 pages. So I might leave this till the last day and just see how much of it I can get through. I don't expect myself to be able to read this whole entire thing in a day. If I do, then I have transformed into a higher version of myself. Next challenge is read a book that starts with the word the. For this one, I want to read The Little Prince by Antoine de saint Expery. This book is very cute. I really like the copy I have and it's only 133 pages with some illustrations and hardly any writing on them so trying to do short books for this readathon and like other readathons I actually want to try and do this like actually read what I set out to read and not only read like two books out of the ten. Next read a book that inspired a movie you've already seen. This one was quite difficult because I don't do that. I don't watch movies before I've read the book. It's a rule that I have with myself. It's just like a rule that my mind has made up and I follow it till no end. So <laughs> because I can't do that, like I, I mentally can't get myself to do that, what I'm going to do instead is slightly alter this challenge and I'm going to read The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells. I have not watched the movie for this, but I have watched the Simpsons episode that is influenced and inspired by The Island of Dr. Moreau. Does that count? I think it does. Who else is a Simpsons fan? Because I love those treehouse horror episodes and one of them has the Island Dr. Moreau and I love that little short story that they have in The Simpsons so I believe I'll actually quite like this. I have read a H.G. Wells before, I've read The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells and I didn't think it was that bad so you know I'm, I'm hoping for good things here and it is 108 pages and it would be good to read a classic in this readathon but like a shorter classic. Next we have read the first book you touch. I'm going to not choose a book for this yet Instead, you'll have to wait till a bit later in the vlog. Five minutes from now, you'll see me picking a book for that challenge. And then read a book completely outside of your house. I, once again, am going to alter this a little bit because I am in a lockdown. Having fun. So what I'm going to do instead is like listen to some beach soundtracks, some beach sounds while I read this book because the front cover, it sort of looks like it's got beachy vibes to it. It's Bloom, which I mentioned in my last haul video. So yeah, this book is I think going to be quite a lot of fun. It's also a graphic novel. Should take me two seconds to read so I'm feeling like I'll probably read this somewhere halfway through the readathon where I feel like I got a bit of like momentum and I'm doing well and this can keep me going. It's such a beachy vibe, you know. The sixth challenge is read a book in a genre you've always wanted to read more of. I decided to use this one to finish off an audiobook that I've been meaning to finish off for the whole entire time that I've been making videos pretty much for the last few months. It's been a whole journey with this book, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. It is a non-fiction audiobook that I just need to finish. I've got three more hours of it. Technically, this isn't going to be like a full proper book that I'm reading for this challenge, but I'm going to classify finishing this book as reading the book because finishing this book seems to be like the hardest thing ever for me right now. I don't know why, but it's just, I'm just so lazy with it and finishing the last three hours of this book is just as daunting as reading an entire book for me right now. And you know what? I think that's because I'm just not used to reading a lot of nonfiction. Nonfiction's just not really my thing. 
I find it a little boring sometimes, a little tedious sometimes. There's a lot of footnotes, there's a lot of like this, that, and the other. So it's a little different for me, but you know, we're gonna try and get to that. And then lastly is read a book that takes place on a different continent than where you live. So for that, I'm going to go with Sandman, the fifth volume called A Game of You. This is like set everywhere. This is, <laughs> this comic series is set in like the dream realm or also in hell, also in heaven. Like it's, it's set everywhere, but it's also set in earth sometimes. So pretty much every single volume, earth pops up here and there and definitely other continents do. Actually at the end of volume four, Australia did pop up for a second. And it was really funny actually. I was like, what? Australia but apart from that every time that earth is shown it's definitely usually on another continent so I'm sure that earth once again will pop up in this volume so I'm going to use this for that challenge so those are the books that I want to get to there's five here there's one still to come and also that audio book that I mentioned we'll see how we go with that that is my TBR for this vlog so the first thing I'm going to try and do is finish a book that I've been meaning to finish for a really long time and that book will be Why We Sleep by Matt Matthew Walker. We'll see if I can finish this book today. Let's try and do this. My housemates and I made a fort, so I guess I'm gonna spend some time chilling in it while I listen to my audiobook. left of my audiobook so I'm going to edit a thumbnail that I'm uploading tonight that usually takes me like an hour to edit a thumbnail and have it like completely ready to upload so I'm gonna listen to an audiobook while I do that and I'll pretty much be finished with the audiobook then which will be great because it's only 6 18 p.m. and then maybe I can get started on a second book on my first day even though I know I'm only reading the latter half of this first book it still counts okay because I say so I have finally finished Why We Sleep. It has been months. This has been a journey that's lasted most of the year with trying to finish that book and it's finally done. I gave it 2.5 stars, which is pretty much like bang in the middle because I rate books out of five stars. It was it was good. A decent average read for me. I still feel like non-fictions aren't really my thing, but maybe I just gotta keep reading different non-fictions till I find the subgenre within non-fiction that I like because right now I just can't seem to find it. These are the three things I learned from it. You should always go to bed at the same time every single day and wake up at the same time every single day. You should always get at least eight hours sleep. And if you're trying to go to sleep but you can't get to sleep, don't sit there getting worried about trying to sleep for two hours while you lie in bed in the dark. Get up and do something until you feel sleepy again. So those are three things that I learned that I haven't already been doing. <laughs> it's very scary that I wasn't already doing the eight hours of sleep. Like what was I doing with my life? Anyway, with that done, I've read one book and we're still on the first day. It's 10 p.m. at the moment. So I'm gonna try and get a head start on my book for tomorrow. My next read is going to be for the challenge of read a book that you touch first. I've got a bunch of books here that I would like to get to in this readathon or I wouldn't mind reading as a seventh book. So either I'll overlap this challenge of another book or I'll have a seventh book on my TBR in one second. Hi everyone! Last night I read this book. I started reading The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. This is a sci-fi classic. I read it till about midnight and read 50 pages. There's another 100 pages to go of this book. So I should be able to finish this book tonight and then hopefully pick up 
a third book and then stay on that pace of starting a book like the day before I should be finishing it that'd be great and then how I'm feeling about this book a third in is that I really really like it a lot of people have talked about how this book is meant to be so funny I am not the type of person that usually laughs at books like it's not something that I do so I just thought okay sure yeah it's probably funny but like I won't find it funny and then I read the book and I'm like I find this so funny right now I couldn't stop giggling and I guess I'm gonna be another one of those people that tells you you should read this book because it's really really funny and it's so easy and accessible to read as a sci-fi book for sure and I'm really glad that there's a challenge of like just read the first book you touch because I ended up picking something quite random that I wasn't planning on reading this week or anytime soon I wouldn't be in this like amazing spot with this book right now if it wasn't for that challenge so that's great crazy crazy let's enter the first time lapse of me reading in this vlog this book's so funny literally right now this dude's just getting poetry read to him by this like alien species he's like spasming because the poetry is so bad like what i don't even understand what i'm reading right now i need a moment So just been reading and there's the last page just finished it hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy double lp can be yours for 725 pounds and cassettes for 750 each wow original records you can listen to the book on lp it's just sort of like an audiobook but way back when and you send this back to the po tick what you want if you how many albums you want how many cassettes you want and then close a check with it that's so cool that people used to do this type of stuff you don't see this anymore this was a solid read i give it like a 4.5 out of 5 stars i had a lot of fun reading this it was so funny and i'm really excited to read the rest of the series now i just finished work so where is it actually i'm gonna read this tonight i'm gonna read bloom the other thing i wanted to say was that I feel like if I don't have an audiobook for this readathon, I'm sort of not using up time very well with reading like while I'm in the shower or while I'm walking or while I'm working even. I feel like that would be something that's really productive that I could do. So I decided to download Audible, get a free Audible subscription and I'm going to listen to Girl, Woman and Other on Audible because that's the longest book on my TBR and the one that's sort of freaking me out the most. So I'm trying to reduce how scared I am of that book by trying to get through as much of it as I can just throughout the day while working when I can't really read anything physical but I could be listening to something maybe so we're gonna try that approach and see how far I get with girl woman other before the weekend when I actually try and finish it this really suits the vibe I'm feeling it. Oh my God, he's in a band. That's so cool. <laughs> Spotted. Vinyl records. Spotted. Yummy, my favorite. I'm tracking decently with Bloom. I keep forgetting the name of it. It's Bloom, right? I'm going to make a quick cup of tea because I feel like I need some warmth. It is the middle of winter right now and I'm so cold and my hands feel like they're gonna freeze off. And we're back at it for the second half with some tea nice and cozy whenever you're feeling down about reading just grab yourself a cup of tea okay so i just finished bloom and right at the end of it there's a little 
bonus page that has a CD mix that one of the main characters has made for the other. And this just reminds me so much of what I used to do, whether it was for friends or my family. When I was younger, even for myself, just make mixes on CDs. And as you can see here, we've actually got some pretty good tracks. We've got Brian Eno's The Big Ship, we've got The Cure, Poise Don't Cry, Prince and Ramones and Sam Cooke. I mean, it's pretty, pretty good. I'm pretty impressed. Ooh, we're done. I give this book a three out of five. I thought that the characters were really strong and actually individuals in this book, which was nice. Sometimes I struggle with graphic novels having characters that are a little too like one dimensional for my liking and just boring to follow. But that was not prevalent here. Like I definitely loved the characters in this book. They're very interesting. I think where this book struggled was like the pacing was definitely a little off. It felt very drawn out at the beginning and then the end when conflict happened it felt like it was really rushed and within 20 pages the conflict had happened and then it was all better again like in 10 pages and I was just like what? I have now read three books. I am on page 75 of Girl, Woman and Other and I'm going to try and go for a walk and read this book on my walk tomorrow around the city and we're currently in a lockdown so I'll take you on my walk and I'll show you what it's like here in Melbourne right now during the lockdown. We'll see. This book on the walk just then I'm enjoying it quite a lot it's quite interesting I'm finding like I'm very intrigued in all the different storylines of the different women I'm now on page 95 this is not the book I'm actually trying to finish today I'll be trying to finish one of the other books that I haven't already started today I'm thinking either Sandman or The Little Prince depending on what I feel like once I finish up my work for the day so we'll see I am just about to start my fourth book I've chosen to read The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry I am really excited about this because it has such good reviews and it's so beloved so I'm really feeling like I will like this it's also illustrated on the inside and not much on each page and there's not many pages at all so this should be pretty easy to get through tonight the most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or touched they are felt with the heart how beautiful I love this copy I have a little cute hardback here we Go. It is now the next day and I finished reading. Stop doing that. Don't look at me while I'm filming. It is now the next day and yesterday I finished. Stop. I just want to say this freaking sentence, dude. It is now Friday. <sighs> It is now Friday and yesterday I finished The Little Prince. I really liked it. I thought it was very cute. I gave it like a four out of five stars. I had a lot of things to say that made me very contemplative and made me think about things in my past and reminisce certain moments that are important to me. I love it when a book does that. Very easy to read, so you can't really go wrong with this book, I think. This is a classic. It's a children's classic, so it's nice to also just get like a classic ticked off my to read list to Tonight, I will be reading Saman Volume 5, A Game of You. I am very excited to read this. I'm enjoying this series so far. I'm nearing the halfway point. Yeah, let's do this. Let's keep diving in because I thought Volume 4 was really good and I'm expecting good things from Volume 5. <music> starting chapter two and I see that chapter two also continues on with the same story from chapter one which I really like sometimes with these volumes they like change to completely different things and they don't continue with the same storyline but I like how it's just continuing with the same storyline because I'm enjoying the storyline right now and chapter three continues with the same plot again yes <laughs> It is now the next morning and I am going to start reading this. 
I finished Sandman Volume 5 yesterday and it was really good again. I really enjoyed Volume 4 and 5. I thought they were really good. I thought Volume 3 was really so-so. I had a mix of different storylines and some of them just didn't sit well with me and just didn't have any impact. It's going pretty strong now. I feel like it's really getting into its stride. Excited once again to continue with that series. I always say that but I really am. I'm just always excited to continue with Sandman. I'd probably give that book a 4 out of 5. And I'm now going to start reading The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells today. I've been meaning to read this book for a really long time. I feel like I'll really like it because I really like horror. I'm assuming it's horror. It's messed up and disturbing, correct? I know that much. I usually like that type of stuff, so let's do it. Hello, little update. It's around two o'clock on Saturday. I started reading The Island of Dr. Moreau. I'm really liking it. It gives me like Frankenstein vibes. Frankenstein's like my favorite book of all time, by the way. But yeah, I'm like 20 pages into this really vibing it really liking it now i'm gonna go to my boyfriend's tonight and i will try to keep reading there and then we'll see how i go with these two books bringing them over to my boyfriend's tonight and hopefully i leave myself in a good spot for tomorrow to finish off these two books and to have read seven books in a week i'm so close so close this morning with my boyfriend picked up some audio technica headphones some new ones i'm so excited about them Whoa. I'm reading Dr. Moreau and I just found a Devo reference or I guess Devo took this so Devo influence of Are We Not Men We Are Devo one of my favorite albums of all time hello everyone I bought a bike it's so beautiful. Let me show you it. I'm absolutely in love with the baby blue and the vintage vibes. And I also got a matching helmet. Got a little basket to put all my stuff in. Really comfy seat. I just did a ride on it just then and yeah, it was really comfy. I'm just obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with this bike right now. So yeah, that's sort of like what I've been doing today so far. I stayed at my boyfriend's last night, as you guys know, and I read up till page 72 of Dr. Moreau. It was really hard to read because I was with someone else, so I couldn't really concentrate. And I had like video chats with my friends that I wanted to do. So I just didn't get around to finishing this book last night, which is fine. It was a Saturday night. So I'm hoping Sunday is a day of productivity this afternoon. So I'm going to try and sit and think finish this book in the next hour. I made a tea as you saw and I made some Vegemite toast and I'm like ready to go and like power through this. And then after that I might take a little bit of a break and then in the evening I'm looking at finishing off Girl, Woman and Other. Fingers crossed I can read seven books in a week. Let's try and do it. It is the final sprint of the reading rush. It is happening right now. say that while I was riding this bike I literally felt like Morrissey. <laughs> I was wearing my Queen is Dead t-shirt and I had like this basket on. I was just like am I literally Morrissey right now? I was like punch a bicycle on a hillside so I finally finished The Island of Dr. Moreau. This is a five out of five book which is crazy. I don't have a lot of five out of five books turn up in my life very often so this is a big moment honestly I just felt like this was a mix of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, Lord of the Flies by William Golding and Animal Farm by George Orwell which are three of my favorite books of all time as well this pretty much was just like a mesh of like all these amazing concepts and themes and plot devices that I love in other novels already and it just came into one so perfectly 
in this book and I'm so excited to find another book that I love so much another classic classics always have like a really special place in my heart they always seem to be the books that I love the most there's a reason that they're a classic if you like any of those free books that I mentioned before then I think you'd probably like some of the themes in this book for sure it's very horrific it's very scary and grotesque at times I literally felt sick from eating and drinking while reading this at points just because some of the themes and some of the description in this book is quite intense I'm very impressed that a book of 108 pages was able to pack so much of a punch. I'm just very impressed. Always good to read a classic. I'm now going to try and finish Girl, Woman and Other. I have read 95 pages of like 400 or something like that so I've got a I've got a situation to handle right now. I'm going to try and pretty much just like listen to the audiobook non-stop. I'm going to have to put it on a faster speed than what I have it at. Like put it at least on a 1.5 or 1.6 speed. I also finished book on the Saturday and the Sunday before this whole week so if I can finish another book today that means I've finished nine books in nine days which would be absolutely insane so dead. I have been reading pretty much non-stop since like three o'clock. <laughs> so I just read for like nine hours straight, but I finally finished Girl Woman Other. It was really good. I'm too tired right now to like actually talk about it. I'm just telling you, it's 11.52 and I finished. I read seven books in a week. Six and a half, if you don't count while we sleep, but I count it. I never want to read again. Hello, it's been a few days since this whole fiasco and I just needed a break from reading. I just needed a break. But now I'm back and I'm ready to talk about some reading. I really liked this book. I probably give it like a four out of five. I loved the idea of like having interweaving storylines of different, mostly black women in the UK and seeing how those storylines intertwine over different generations. I loved how we follow people that were around my age and follow people that like my grandma's age and everywhere in between as well. That was super cool. There's a lot of representation in this book, which I really like as well. And the writing style was really cool. It didn't have any punctuation pretty much, like no commas, no full stops, no quotation marks. and when I started reading it, it was very weird. However, by the end of the book, I was absolutely loving the writing style as well. I listened to this mostly in audiobook as well, and the audiobook was really good. This is actually my first experience reading a physical copy along with the audiobook, and I want to do it again 100%. Like, I love the idea of it. The only thing I didn't like about this book and why I give it a 4 out of 5 instead of a 5 is that sometimes it just felt a little repetitive, like I was just reading the same story over and over again, or just reading the same aspects of someone's life. Like, there were a few storylines in this book where essentially <laughs> they meet a dude or they meet someone in their life and then you sort of follow the relationship and then falling in love and then falling out of love and seeing the dysfunction of it and I just felt a little like okay I know that a lot of relationships are dysfunctional and a lot end bad uh, but like do they all end bad? I don't know. I just feel like I was trying to go on and on about the same damn point about marriage and love and relationships and I understood it like the first or second time that she brought it up. Like we didn't need seven different storylines with the same overarching plot. Anyway, apart from that I really did like this book quite a lot. This is the only book that I have here that is written by a person of colour I'm pretty sure which sort of sucks. But the thing is, is like I've tried to reevaluate my reading and how I pick up predominantly white authors. And this was a more recent purchase for me. And now at bookstores, I'm trying to like look more at buying books that are from people of color, especially black authors and also First Nations here in Australia. So I think as my channel continues and I keep talking about more books, you'll probably see a lot more literature here on this channel channel from Australia as well as black authors because I'm trying my best to read more from those specific authors because I just don't do it and it's pretty bad. Like I think I'm pretty good with reading a lot of books from Asian authors and a lot of books from white authors but that's pretty much it. 
pregnancy is such an issue. But I am really glad that I read this. It taught me a lot about the black experience in the UK and the immigrant experience as well, immigrating from Africa to a Western country. I'm not very happy with the reading rush right now. There's been a bit of controversy with the live show and the read-along book that was chosen, which was such a fun age. Apparently both Ariel and Raylene didn't even read the book. So that's a bit of an issue. It all just seems quite disrespectful. The least you can do is read the damn book that you picked. Is it that hard to include one book? Like I have put a minimal effort to this readathon and I still read one book by a person of color and I'm still annoyed at myself that I didn't read more books from people of color. I will link to other black booktubers that have talked about this topic more at length in my description if you want to check it out but I did just want to say that I'm quite disappointed in that because it's important to speak up about things that are not okay and that's definitely not okay. Yes I'm very excited I'm very happy with myself that I've read seven books seven-ish books in in a week pretty intense for me to do that. I definitely got sick of reading after a while, but I'm still very proud and I'm so ahead on my reading schedule now for this year. It's the best thing ever. I can take a huge break and just focus on my Brando Sando. So thank you everybody for watching. Until next time, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you all very soon. Bye!